Hi, I'm John from Bike Social. Today I'm going to talk about sports bike tyres. Now, over 23 odd years of riding, I've had 17, 18 bikes. I've had to choose a lot of tyres and I know I've made some bad choices. So I'm here with Gary Hartshorn. He's the senior product manager for Bridgestone across North Europe. Now, Gary, you ride a lot, don't you? And a lot I do, of different yeah. Stuff. It's probably 25,000 miles a year. I ride trials bikes, enduro bikes, race. Uh, I've got 1200 GSA on the road. So yeah, I'm, I'm always out on a motorcycle doing something. I said I've made some bad choices and I've come to learn it's because I've overtired. So let's get to what overtired is. Let's say, let's look at different types of sports bike riders. There's, there's sports bikes out there, mm -hmm. but not everybody is super, not everybody's Mark Marquez on the road, are they? No. So let's start with somebody who say, if people are going to be honest about how they ride, let's say somebody's got a sports bike, they don't do track days, and they ride at fairly sensible road speeds. Mm -hmm. How do they know what tire to choose? In the sports bike market, there's, there's many different segments, as you've just alluded to. Um, there's your sensible, there's your, your racer, there's your track dayer, yeah. um, there's your person that likes sports bikes that what does distance on, or yeah. even commutes on, yeah. for that matter. But to answer that question, I mean, the S22, that is basically the, um, the lowest level of sports tyre that you can get. Okay. Um, so if you're not doing track days or anything like that, and you're just literally riding on the road at a leisurely pace, yeah. that would be your best option. Yeah. And, and so is that... For wet weather performance and stuff like that. Say, say somebody in the morning, somebody you know, like commuting on a, so one bike, got a sports bike, always one of them. Yeah, just as, a, as an all round performance, yeah. as an all round sports tyre, that would be, because yes, it is better in the wet than that, as you can you know, you can see the difference so in the grooves, yeah. for example. Oh, well, they, or, actually, this is a race tyre. Well, that's a race tyre, yeah. or even this one, the RS10, which will be the Lex level up from this one. You can, okay. you can see the difference between yeah. uh, you know, the, the number of grooves, so, the, so therefore the wet weather. Yeah, performance that they will both offer. For dry. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. If, if you're riding your bike quite regularly, you don't mind riding it in the wet and that sort of stuff, and that will be your best option. Okay. So going up a step, then somebody who pretty rapid on the road and they're doing track days, maybe they're in up to intermediate group. Yeah. Are we looking at the RS10? Yeah, you would. Yeah, and especially if, if you're the sort of person that would ride to the track day, yeah. rather than sticking in your van and you don't want to use tire warmers and paddock stands because once you get get into the race side of it, yeah. that's what you need. You need tire warms, you need paddock stands, you need an extension lead, you need a generator and all that stuff that comes with it. Yeah. So if you don't want to go down that route or you want to ride to the circuit, then the RS10, yeah, is, yeah. is the next level up from, from the S22. Yeah. yeah. But presumably the difference here partly is how they take the temperature on. This is what I discovered I was doing wrong. I was looking at tires and thinking, right, I'll have the top spec race tire because that's, if I'm going to make a mistake, I want it to be my mistake, not the tires mistake. Yeah. But it turned out, going for the highest speed rating or a tire yeah. that is super sticky. Yeah. And people get drawn into that, thinking yeah. that they want to get the stickiest tire. Yeah. Well, that's fine. But the higher you go up this scale, yeah. the harder you need to ride. Right. Uh, because the, the operating temperatures of each different type yeah. are higher. Right. Um, so if you were to use um, that versus that on the road, because that's a full-on race tire. Yeah. You know that will work from up until like 50 or 60 degrees. That doesn't start working yeah. until 50 or 60 degrees. Right. You know, so so you've got, you've got to ride that extremely hard. So it's stickier, but only when it's but up to only temperature. when it's up to temperature. Yeah. yeah so that, then, so the RS10 here will be in between that and that. Yeah. So if you are doing track days and you like you say probably uh, yeah high level of um, the novice intermediate yeah. group yeah. that will be a perfect option because also because it's designed as a road tire the wet weather properties will be much better than than a full-on yeah, race tire yeah. as well so you know it depends on because the, then again if you're going to get to the race you need spare wheels yeah. you need wets and yeah, so on yeah. and so forth and not only does the, the amount of equipment that you need change yeah. the costs change yeah. Yeah. so it depends on what you want to do and how serious you are about your sports bike riding and, and what type of sports bike riding that you do yeah so does it matter getting that heat into tires? And I guess that's the thing, isn't it? For, especially at that time when I was doing that, I wasn't doing track days. Mm -hmm. So I really should have been on something like the S22 that I could get the temperature into yeah. to make it stick. Because yeah. there, there were times I was pulling away on when I had a Monster S4R, the, it was just spinning up yeah. in, in spring in, in the UK, um, especially pulling away from place. And I was just over tiring. You will, them. because you, you know, like, like you've just said, the, the, it, it will be grippier. Yeah. But only when it's up to, up to its optimum temperature. So as, as an everyday 
riding experience when you're stopping at traffic lights or you're stuck in traffic jams or yeah. T-junction, you know, whatever it may be. Yeah. That, that tyre is, is cooling down. Yeah. So the more it cools down, the less grip that you've got. Whereas with something like this, you, you, you always, you're always in its temperature range. Yeah. And that, that makes a massive difference. So you'll actually get more grip from this in everyday riding than you will from that. Yeah. And okay. from this. Yeah. So what about if you've got, uh, say, a 600? Is there a difference between saying I've got a 600 or a 1,000cc hypersports bike? Or are you still getting the same kind of load? You will just use the same principle. Oh, okay. It, it, it's exactly the same because 600 and above, um, which is a 180, 55, 17, usually what comes on a, on a 600. Yeah. Uh, then you go to 190, 50, 190, 55, but mostly the, 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 there's very little difference between them. Yeah. Very little difference between them. Okay. So, so the same principle would apply across all of these tyres. Yeah. Um, so if, you, like you say, if you're a judge a general road rider, the S22. Yeah. So it doesn't really make any difference. The principle's the same. And what if you're dropping down to, say, you've got 400 or something like that? You've got 400. We, we make these, these tyres, RS10s. We make, although this is like a Z stroke W rated, yeah. we'd make... The, if you've got a 400, we make the 110s and the 140s and the 150s in H rated. Right. So those tyres are, are designed to suit that weight and power of bike. Yeah. Um, so people make the mistake of wanting to put a Z rated on because they think it's yeah. a superior tyre. Yeah. It isn't. Yeah. Well, it is, but only on a 1,000cc or a yes. 600cc yeah. that, that's producing the power yeah. and the weight. So on a 400cc, we, we, make, we take this into consideration. Yeah. You know, we, we make it in an H rated. We make it in an H rated type of compound. We make it in an H rated type of carcass yeah. to, to, to match that type of bike. Yeah. So yeah, don't, don't over tire. No. Go with what is right for the bike. And that what is right is what is recommended by the, the bike manufacturer. They'll tell you what rating you. You, yeah, you, you need. They'll tell you what you need. So let's go up the level now. If you're a track rider. So let's talk about somebody who only rides on track. Yeah. This bike is not going to be used on the road. Yeah. Does that open up your choices? It does. You've, got, you've then got two options then. You've got like the R11 or the VO2 slick. Yeah. Um, so you've got the R11, as you can see, it's got tread in it. Yeah. So usually at this level, you'd need to be um, sort of middle inters yeah. uh, upwards. Yeah. I mean, you can, even, you can even run them at, um, at fast of the fast group. Depends yeah. on what you want, because obviously it, it's like a super sport, super stock, full yeah. on race tyre. Right. Um, but because it's got grooves, it moves around more, yeah. uh, it creates more heat, so it's easier to keep the heat into it oh, than okay. it is with a slick. You get more feel from this because they move around, whereas yeah. the slicks feel very, very solid. Yeah. Um, so, or if you want to run slicks, again, you know, from, from fast intermediate all the way into fasts, if, you, if you're quick enough, but you're probably best to be middle of fast group. Yeah. Um, because simply because you need to ride them harder yeah. to keep the heat into them. Okay. It's as simple as that. So really. that's it. If, if somebody, nothing wrong with this, but somebody's got into it, they bought themselves a track bike, they're, they're like, yes, this is my track bike, I'm going in. They start in the novice group because you know, they've they're yeah. not got that pace. The last thing they actually want to do is be putting slicks on it. That's the last thing they want to do. Right. It's exactly. actually going to be worse yeah. for them. So yeah, again, so going back to what you just said, people, oh, I'm going to run slicks together grippiest. Well, Yes, they are, but only if you can ride at a certain speed. Yeah. Once you can outperform one of these, yeah. then you can get moved to these. Okay. But you, until you can get to that point, yeah. you know, th you there's, no, there's no need to go there. No. You, at all. Not only would you be wasting money, you've actually not got as much grip. No, you haven't got as much grip. Right. Yeah. What about the wet? That's for this one. <laughs> Wets, um, I mean, wets can be used by anybody. It yeah. doesn't matter what level you're at, okay. because a wet is designed to work at you know, well, 10 degrees, 15, right. 20 degrees. So you don't need tire so you're not warmers. About the heat. Some people do use tire warmers, but that's a head thing. You don't, you don't need to use them. I right. don't use them. Okay. Um, uh, but they're incredible. Um, yeah. Wets um, is any level of person can ride wets. Yeah. It's it's a confidence thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they they feel they're like blue. To, I mean, I they are. We yeah. distort it. it wets are incredible, and, and I, I I would recommend anybody. If you're doing track days, yeah. or if you haven't done a track day, if anybody's watching this, I haven't done a track day, do one, yeah. do one in the wet yeah. and fit wets. Yeah. You'll be surprised how much you'll actually learn about how to ride a motorcycle fast yeah. in the wet with wets on. Presumably with, they don't last very long. In the wet, they last quite long. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, they're not too bad. You can, you, if it's proper wet, it depends how wet is wet yeah. Um, yeah. and how much water you've, you've got to disperse. But if it's wet, if it's proper wet, then yeah, they'll, they'll last quite long. And normally wet, they just use the, lose the sharp edges. And once they start to use, lose the sharp edges, that's when the performance starts to deteriorate. Right. 
Um, but yeah, I've told him, I said to challenge anyone, just go and do it, just go and ride on them. Because yeah. then when you get back to these, yeah. you'd be amazed how brilliant these feel. Yeah. And how fast you can then go. It really would really improve your riding. Ah, cool. So there's another type of rider. There may be some sports bike owners who've come to this video and want to know what tires to buy, but they're actually a touring rider. They use their sports bike touring around. They're not interested in track days. Are they still looking at something like an S22 or is there another tire they should be considering? Uh, there's, there's nothing to stop them fitting a touring tire uh, okay. or a sport touring tire, yeah. a T31. You know, th there are plenty of riders out there that you're right, they're not bothered about. Uh, riding fast on the road, yeah. they just like riding sports bikes. Yeah, um, and they may even go. So we've got T31 here. Yeah, we? T31. Yeah. That's a perfect, perfect example. You know, they could put that on, yeah. go and ride through France, through Spain, into Portimao, yeah. do a track day. And so ride you can, you'd still be fine on a track day oh, on absolutely. a sport touring yeah, tire. Absolutely, yeah. yeah oh, you can, right. So you can do that. Yeah, so you can use any of these tires. What's the disadvantage in sticking a sport touring tire on and doing one or two track days a year? Nothing. <laughs> the, the, the disadvantage, obviously, you've got levels of grip. Yeah, of course. You've got more tread in here, haven't you? You've so got, got more tread, there's better in the wet. So if you do commute on your yeah. sports bike, then that would be a better option because it's got much better wet weather yeah. uh, performance. Yeah, uh, yeah. The dry performance is far better than you would think it is yeah. on a sport touring tyre, far better. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if, if, and, if you, and if you're looking at doing lots of miles as well on your sports bike, then T31 is probably the best option yeah. that you've got. Yeah. But I think at the end of the day, I think it's about being true yeah. to who you are as a rider. Yeah. You know, don't get drawn into, oh, I must have this and I must have the stickiest, that and so on and so yeah. forth. If that's what you want to do and that's what you do with your bike, then fit the tyre that suits your needs. Yeah. It's as simple as that. So, tyre pressures. There's a lot of talk. Let's stick with road for now. Yep. We're riding on the road. Forget about these. Riding on the road on one of these sets yep. of tyres. Your um, bike manufacturer will probably give you one, probably 3642. Yeah. Should we drop that in the wet, in the no. for better grip? If, if it's a road tyre like these two, for example, then yeah. just stay at 36.42. Okay. Um, unless there's a, in your handbook, or from us, or whatever manufacturer, a lower limit, which yes. sometimes there can be, because sometimes there's pillion pressures and solo pressures. Yeah. So if you're riding solo, use the solo pressures. If you're riding pillion, use the pillion pressures. Yeah. Don't go below it, because the tyres the are designed to work within those parameters. They're not designed to work below that. So you'll actually get worse grip because you're, you're, you're t as your tyre changes shape, presumably, it's, it's changing the contact patch, you're closing up the... Yeah, you could do, grip. but the, the main reason is, is that it, the carcass of the tyre is yeah. designed to take the weight, the speed, etc. So if you keep going down and you hit potholes and, uh, and manhole covers and cat's eyes and stuff like that, you could, without knowing it, create damage to the carcass right. inside. Okay. Um, so that's why you really need to keep the pressures as they are. Do as on track, them. it's very different because it's smooth, you, you know. You well, let's it. look at track then, because, uh, so on the road, do as you're told. Yes. Um, but on track, let's first go back to the different levels of rider. Let's say you've got somebody, their first track day. Yeah. So they're, they're really, you know, I remember my first track day, I was, I was worried. You're going in and then all your mates are there, all those other people coming in going, you've got to try, drop your tyre pressures, you've got to do this, you've got to do this. Yeah. I think it would depend on whether it's your first track day is one thing, but it depends how quick you are as well. If, if it's your first track day, you are a proper novice yeah. and you are, you know, let's say from the lowest to the middle of a novice group, yeah. I wouldn't even bother with your tyre pressures. Great. I'd just go out there. So there's one less thing to worry about. Ex exactly. The tyres would be more than grippy enough for that level of riding. Yeah. Go and get some instruction. Yeah. That's what I would recommend yeah, you do. Forget yeah. about your bike. Yeah. Make sure it's, it's safe, obviously, and, yeah. and worthy to ride. Yeah. But in terms of the, the pressures, I wouldn't even bother. Okay. Um, go, and get some, go, go and learn to ride first. Yeah. And go and get yourself to a level where you then need to start thinking about your tyres and yeah. your pressures and so on and so forth. Yeah. And I suppose that is that where, if the person, they've been out, they come in, they didn't realise how good they are. Or say they're starting to snort up the side of the tyres, you're getting those balls all over the edge. Is that a sign that the tyre's getting too up? No, it, it, it depends on the wear. There's different types of wear that, that you will see. Um, there's cold tear, there's hot tear, there's, there's suspension issues. Mm. I mean, that's another, another story. Yeah. Um, but if you are getting to that point, yeah, you probably do need to be checking something. Okay. Um, but it's probably more down to, to lap times, where you're at. Yeah. Um, if, if you're at, once you start getting towards the, fa the, the, you know, the fast end of the novice group, yeah. then you are then going to need to start looking at and equally if you're going into pressures. intermediate. And then if you start, so the more you, the quicker you get, the more um, sort of variants you will find that are coming in to yeah. your riding that you will need to look at and you will need to action and, and rectify. So how much do you drop them? How do you know how far to drop them? 
And why are you dropping them? Obviously, when you ride on track, you, yeah. you usually tend to ride faster than you do on the road. Yeah. The faster you ride on the track, yeah. the, the hotter the air will become yeah. inside the chamber and the hotter... So it's expanding. So everything's expanding, so the pressure will rise. Yeah. So as the pressure rises, the, the, the way that the tyre deforms, yeah. um, it won't deform as well as it would as if it was at a lower pressure. So the, obviously the point of going on the track is to get a light, widest, longest contact patch that you can get to get the grip. Yeah. Um, so, so the faster you go, the yeah. lower the pressure, in theory, yeah. uh, that, you, that you need to use. Uh, with, with these two, we, we have on our website, we will have, um, even our race dealers, they will have all this information. Yeah. So if you, if you call them and, um, and tell them what you've got, yeah. they'll advise what to use. Because okay. um, for these two, we would advise a cold pressure. Yeah. For, for this and that, we would yeah, advise it, a hot pressure. So on the road, you know, when anybody checks their tyre pressures, you always check them when your tyres are cold. Correct. So you, if we were saying 36, 42, that's a cold pressure. So on track, you'd be able to advise me on what I should set that at cold. At cold. Okay. Yes. And then when you get into more advanced, you're looking at... You're looking at hot. Okay. Yeah. Because, as I say before, the, the approach that we have towards the road tyres, yeah. the design yeah. and what we want them to do yeah. is very different to what we want okay. these to do. So there's a lot more difference in these, between these tyres than just a different tread and Correct. Or no cuts yeah. in them. It's Correct. The yeah, I mean, like, you know, th this is designed to to probably lap within two or three seconds of that yeah. on track, yeah. but it's also designed to do uh, 5,000 miles yeah. on loads of different bikes, yeah. on loads of different tarmac surfaces around yeah. Europe or around the world. Whereas this and this, they're designed to do a race or a couple of races, you know, have three or four heat cycles, whereas this will have hundreds of heat cycles. Yeah. And so it's, it's, a, it's a totally different approach. Is there a rule of thumb? You know, could it be as simple as, you know, I'm, I'm going on an intermediate track day in a few weeks, how far should I drop them from 36-42? Usually on these, they're around sort of 32 from 30 rear. Okay. Is what you, so the rear you would drop quite considerably, so that's like 12 PSI. Yeah, the rear, so the rear, so but whereas you've got the rear is normally under a higher pressure at cold yeah. than the front, it actually swaps around. It swaps around, because on, on the track you'll be, um, you, this will rise more than the front wheel because you've got yeah. 200 brake horsepower, for example, yeah. being put through it. Yeah. And usually, the slower you are, the more abuse you will give it because you're not smooth. Ah, uh, okay. So if, you, so if you're on line yeah. and you're taking the right lines, yeah. you're far smoother than you are by keep making mistakes. Right. So yeah. if you keep running deep into corners and you're heavy on the brakes and stuff, you're asking a hell That's of a me. lot of these tyres and you're asking them to do something yeah. that they weren't necessarily designed to do. Yeah. Um, they can handle it, obviously. Of course they can handle it. But they're working it. in a different way. But they're working in a optimum. different way. And, and yeah. it's what, when we get to, um, like, a race, if you, if you just went round like a top racer just went round a track, lap after lap after lap in testing, for example, yeah. and doing a race simulation, the tyre will wear completely differently yeah. to what it will at the same track, same temperatures, etc. than it will in a race. Right. Because the difference then, you're trying to overtake someone, yeah. you're trying to defend, you're trying to get out the corner underneath someone. Yeah. So all of a sudden, the, the way you're using the tyre is different. Yeah. And, and, it, and it can make a... It can make a a massive difference in some, 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 some occasions. So this is going to be different depending on whether you're on the road or the track, but how do you scrub a new pair of tyres in? Yeah, good question. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of cobblers about it, isn't there? Release agents and... Yeah, it's... release agents, some manufacturers use them, some don't, but the base release agent is, release agent is how we get the tyres out of the mould. And Bridgestone... You... We don't use them. No. Uh, we've got really high quality mould, so that, yeah, as you can see, there's, there's no release agent yeah. in there whatsoever. So it's a case of scrubbing it in left to right, uh, which can be done on track in a lap. Yeah. Um, you know, if there's plenty of lefts and rights, that's fine, you can do it with a lap. But it's not just about scrubbing them in from left to right, it's about the tyre settling onto the rim because the bobber had yeah. been put on with uh, paste. Yeah. So until that's dry, if you start, you could put in 200 brake horsepower through it, it could spin on the rim, then it's out of balance. Uh, but also, the, the components within the carcass, they need to settle down. They need to yeah. set, the, you know, there's, there's, there's a few layers in there, yeah. and they need to settle down into one another. Yeah. Um, so it's like, uh, if you've got a, a van full of boxes, for example, yeah, and you yeah. shove that last one in and you just, you know, just shove it in like that, yeah. you drive half an hour down the road and get to your destination, that box will just pull out because yeah. everything's settled down. Yeah. And, it, and it's the same within here. Okay. Um, so it's like 200 miles, but you know, if, you, if you're racing, you know, I race and you yeah. know, I'll, I'll do, I'll do a, a lap yeah. and I'm away, I'm racing then. Yeah. I, I haven't got time to, to, <laughs> to sit and wait and you know, do yeah. 200 miles. So yeah. you, you're just away. Yeah. But the thing is with racing, I'll probably only do a day's racing, then I'll stick a new one on. Yeah. So you know, I'm probably only doing, what, 100 miles? Yeah. So I'm not even 
at yeah. half of scrubbing them in. Yeah. So, but like I say, on the road, it's different. Yeah. So that, that, that rider who's got a sports bike, maybe doesn't do track days or you know, a bit more of a sedate ride, how would they, they've got a new set of tyres on, what do they need to do from the moment they pull away from that fit and centre? Um, just be very careful. Yeah. No sudden accelerations. Okay. Uh, just very smooth, yeah. very smooth braking and, and incremental um, sort of angles yeah. through the corners. So try and make sure that you've got Every, every time you move, move into, into a sort of a, a sharper angle, more, yeah. more of an angle, make sure that you've got half scrubbed, half new, half okay. scrubbed, half new until you get to the edge. Yeah, so you're not going over, yeah. you're going over, yeah. over, over, over. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, and once you do that, then you, you'll be fine, you're away, yeah. And sports, sports bikes, there's a fair, nothing wrong with this, there's a fair chance it might be laid up over the winter. Yeah. Um, but we've got two different things here, haven't we? We've got some tyres that might be stored, and we've got a sports bike that might be stored. So how do you keep tyres? The best way to keep tyres is to put them in the loft uh, because it's dark, it's out of sunlight. Just on their side? Yeah, just on the side, yeah. Um, it's, it's not minus, um, it's out of sunlight and it's dark and that's usually, the, they're the three things that will affect the compound. Um, so, but if you've got the, the bike on paddock stands, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Um, if they're not on paddock stands, then you'll need to make sure that they're on a rug or a carpet or something like that. Uh, and also go and check the pressures on a regular basis because rubber is porous, it will leak. It naturally right. leaks. In any tire? Any tire, it, it, right. it, will, it will naturally leak. Yeah. So if you leave it for a couple of months, yeah. it will have lost air. So therefore the weight of the tire then is sitting on, uh, sorry, the weight of the bike is sitting on the tire. Yeah. Um, and they could create damage internally that you can't see. So we're not talking about, you know, you go in and you see, oh, my, bike, my tires are flat. You can be causing internal damage you to the be. tire. You could be, yeah. yeah. Especially over a longer period of time, the more yeah. chance that there's, there's issues. So paddock stand's ideal. Paddock stand's ideal. If not, if not, on rugs, but go and check the pressures weekly. Right, and yeah, rotate the tires, weekly. Yeah, rotate the tires, spin them round so the weight's yeah. always in different places. Them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I don't mean to spin it and then look, <laughs> but you just move it, just spin it round so the yeah. weight's always in a different part of the tire, but just make sure, pump the tires up. Yeah. And usually on the side of the tire wall, there'll be, um, say, maximum um, um, pressure. Yeah. Pump them right up. Oh, right. Yeah, just pump them right up. But, I mean, when I do stuff, if I've got new tires or I've done some work on a bike, I normally put a little note underneath the filler cap. So if you're going to fill these up to full pressure, yeah. Yeah. Put a note under there saying, yeah. Yeah. Then, let these down before riding. But you should always do a visual check anyway. Do you know when your yeah, tyre's yeah, been yeah. away for three months? Yeah. You know, before you ride the bike, check the bike, check the tyres, do a visual check, yeah. spin them, make sure there's no nails or anything in them. Because yeah. the last thing you want to do is get your bike out and you've got a puncture. Yeah. Or there's a nail in there. Oh, God, yeah. you know, you've got to go and sort it out before you even ride. Yeah. You know, that's something that you should be doing over the winter. Yeah. It's just general maintenance. Yeah. And that, that uh, you said about putting them on rugs or on carpet, is yeah. that just to keep them away from the it's just, cold? Yeah, it's just to keep them away from the cold because, um, you know, if, if, if concrete gets really cold in the winter and, it, and if we get really cold weather like we did last year, the beach from the east, etc. Yeah, yeah. um, so then we can get to a point where the tie, the compound can get too cold. Yeah. It becomes like what we call a glass transition. It becomes very brittle and then can crack. Right. Um, so you want to avoid that again because it's going to. If you don't do it, it's going to cost you money to get a new one. Yeah. Um, and for the sake of putting it on some rugs or some paddock stands, yeah. You know, you save yourself a hell of a lot of money. And, if and you're not the whole take. Yes. Yeah. yeah. If you're not putting many miles on a sports bike, so we're talking about a road rider here. We're yeah. not necessarily looking at the race stuff. How long can tyres last? I'm not talking about their wear because obviously that depends on how hard you ride yeah. and yeah. even how, whether you're on or off the throttle. But what's the, have they got a lifespan? They have. Um, five years is the manufacturer's warranty. Okay. Um, so anything after that... Is that from fitting? That, no, that's from date of production. Okay. So on the DOT on the side, the, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's the last four numbers yeah. is the week and year yeah. uh, the, the, when the tire was, was made. Yeah. Uh, so every, every tire, road legal tire has that. Yeah. So five years from production, yeah. um, you can use them. Um, they do deteriorate over a period, over every year. Yeah. They do, they do, because it's rubber. It, it does, yeah. it does deteriorate. Yeah. Um, but anything after that, we won't cover as a manufacturer's warranty. You yeah. can use them up to ten years or so. Yeah. Um, but yeah. we would recommend that if it's if it's five years, then just change them. So it's worth looking at where you're buying them from, making sure exactly. buy from somebody reputable. Yeah. And if if they're cheap, question why and where are they coming yeah, from? Yeah. And how old and, are and they? ask if they are cheap. Then at least ask the person that you're buying from from. from yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ask for the dot code yeah. and the date code. One other thing I want to ask you about traction control and ABS on a lot of modern bikes. Mm -hmm. How does that affect a tyre? Do you need to, is it a consideration you take when you're designing? It is, yeah, when, when we design the tyres now. Uh, mm -hmm. You go back to 
uh, before then, the, yeah. the, the, the methodology, what we used to design then is very different to what it is now because you ride a bike now, you're in a safety net. Yeah. Um, and I think you, you noticed that from, you know, the 600 sales have dropped, yeah. 1,000 cc sales have gone up. Yeah. Why is that? Is that because the riders have got better? No, it's because the bikes have got easier to ride. Yeah, yeah. You, you're in that safety net. Yeah. Um, you can ride them faster than you could before because yeah. they're looking after you. Yeah. Uh, so because the, the, the pulses and, and the traction controls on, off, on, off, on, off all the time, and it's looking after you and it's cutting the power, we have to change the way that we design the tires. Right, so that pulsing, mm. is that just like bad riding? Kind of bad riding where you're on and off the throttle. Is that putting a di that's putting that inefficient? Well, it's probably even on, worse which is making it because it's harder. doing because it's doing. So traction control can actually wear a tire out quicker. It could, yeah. Right. And also the configuration of engines, yeah. like V twins, yeah. tend to wear tires out yeah. more quickly. Uh, Obviously, it's not going to. Uh, it's not like it's not as much wear as if you're spinning the tire up and drifting. I can't do this. No. But actually, you'd think, oh well, I've got traction control. It's not going to wear a tire out. But actually, because it's doing yeah. this load, 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 load. It's not as much as spinning it up, but it's still more than not putting it under extreme Well, exactly, load. and certainly on, on, on a groove tyre, because when that's coming on and off and on and off all the time, it's, everything's moving and squeezing together. Yeah. So that's creating heat. Yeah. So when, you, when you've got heat in, in there, yeah. it's creating wear. Yeah. So, so yeah, so the tyre could wear more quickly okay. um, than, than what it would on a bike without traction control. Well, my main thing has been, don't buy tyres I don't need. Not because I'm not wasting money, but because I'm not going to be buy, as quick as... Buy tyres for what suits you, yeah. not what somebody else tells you you yes. should buy. You know, the, the, all of these tyres here um, are extremely grippy. Yeah. You know, that's the grippiest, and then that one, then, then that one, and that but one. But that wouldn't be the grippiest for me. No. If we went out on the road... Exactly. Took that out now... Yeah, exactly. I'd be off. That would be the best option. And that yeah. would be the best option for, for most, yeah. most people. Yeah. Um, you know, 95% of people, that will be more than enough. Yeah. More than enough. Yeah. You know, the difference between that and that is, unless you can ride extreme, unless you can outperform that, yeah. you don't need that. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Brilliant. Now, thanks for your time. You're very welcome. Thanks very mate. much. Cheers,